Hello and welcome back to Console Cowboys. So in the last video we created this vulnerable code that's on the screen right now and in this one we're going to exploit this and talk about why it's vulnerable. So first thing you're going to want to do is check here and make sure that you have the proper uh, compiler version which is the 0.5.12 which uh, matches the version that you have at the top of this file right here. Um, you can also go to the Console Cowboys GitHub linked below, which will have the code if you didn't code it with us in the last video. And if you go down here, you'll see that here's our compile. We're going to hit compile underflow.sol. If you don't see it saying um, compile underflow.sol in here, it means it's not selected in here. So click it, go down, hit compile, and you'll see a green arrow show up and then you should be good to go. Then you can click down to this one right here and hit deploy. Um, first make sure that you have JavaScript VM selected as your environment. There's other environments um, used to connect to different things. We don't need any of those right now. We will use that in a, another video where we kind of link things up and we used it in some previous videos. Um, so we're gonna hit deploy. And down here you'll see our deployed contract which will have our functions. We have our contribute function, our transfer function, and our get balance function. So essentially, um, you know, what we talked about before was we have this require line, and the require line requires us to have five way in our account in order to send any values to anyone else. So what we're going to do is we're gonna contribute, and we're only gonna contribute three way. So it won't meet that restriction when we're actually trying to send. So if we go up here and we put in three into the value column, because if you remember in here, we use message.value when we hit contribute, and that's where we add the value is just right up there. So if we hit contribute, you'll see down here there's a check mark, and if you clicked into here, it'll give you information about the transaction, and you'll see right here we got three way. It scrolled up, but uh, right there we got three-way. And if we check our balance and scroll down here, you'll see three. So that's all correct. Now, if we try to transfer this, it won't actually work. So we can go up here and it shows us our accounts. We have a bunch of accounts available to us. Each one will have 100 Ether in it. We have a little less in the first account because we used some way in order to deploy the first um, contract. So if we select the other account, and copy it. So we copy it to clipboard and we go back to the first one. What we're gonna do is we're going to go to transfer and paste in that address and put a comma there. And we're going to try to transfer our three-way. Um, now this is gonna probably fail or it should fail because when it comes down to this require line, it's gonna say, hey, message.sender, um, if you minus the value, it needs to be greater than or equal to five. Um, we only have three in here, which is gonna make it zero when we minus it. So obviously we can't send it. We need to have a minimum balance. So this also would work if we had like 10 and we were trying to send six, the same thing would happen. We should get an error. So I've hit transfer here. Boom, you'll see right here, there is no check mark. It says transact to underflow transfer error, VM error revert, so it reverted the transaction and nothing actually happened, right? If we hit get balance, we still have three. If we hear, if we check the balance of the other guy over here, boom, oh, gotta select it, there we go. So we cruise down, we hit get balance on here, they still have zero. Okay, so that actually, you know, it didn't work, it failed out, but, there's an overflow condition, right? So because these numbers can overflow, if we actually send more than we have, so if we send four, technically it should go below zero. And since there's no negative numbers with the uint value, it should go to the highest available value. So let's try that. And you'll see here we got a green check mark. If we click it, we can scroll down and look at some info here. Um, there we go. Scroll down all the way to the bottom. Um, it says value zero way. That looks interesting, but if I check my balance here, my balance is really, 
really, really big, right? And it shouldn't be like that. So um, let's actually check the other user's balance. So if I go here to the second user, um, which is the one that we sent a value to, now they had a zero balance before. If we check their balance now, they actually have the four that we sent them, right? We didn't even have four to send. So essentially, we sent more than what we had, but because of the overflow condition, we actually sent the value we wanted, which was four, and when we did this second line right here, this balances message.sender, so we said the person who's sending the value, we need to minus the value that they sent. So when we minused four from three, we were below zero and we got the highest amount. And then we sent the value to the receiver, which was four because it passed this check up here and allowed us to continue. Pretty cool, and that's basically how overflows and underflows work is we just exceed the value, maximum value or minimum value that you can actually do with a uint value. And there are ways to check this. For example, if you were doing um, you know, uh, division, then you would check the multiplication prior to sending to make sure you have the correct value or vice versa. Um, we'll get into that with some safe math, math functions in some uh, videos after this one. Um, we're also going to take a look at attacking an actual um, decentralized application that has this vulnerability. But uh, I hope you learned something in this video. If you run into any issues, let me know. It's pretty straightforward with Remix, but they change things. The biggest issue you'll run into is when you got this uh, different compiler version up here. Make sure you're using the 0.5.12, or you might run into issues if there's a new version that comes out, which changes the coding standards. Often they used uh, different ways of setting up contracts or different ways of declaring variables in different versions and it'll screw you up. So make sure you're using that 0.5.12 for this particular example. You can go to the GitHub linked below and grab that. Um, anyways, if you learned something, hit the like button. If uh, you wanna be updated of new videos, hit the subscribe button and I'll catch you in the next video where we'll look at some other issues related to these integer overflows.